Okay, so what we're going to start off doing here is we're actually, for demonstration purposes, mounting the uh, dog fence transmitter box outside. Um, in normal cases, you're going to go ahead and just drill a hole through your wall with a masonry bit and run the uh, twisted dog fence wire inside. Um, it's pretty simple. It's just a, a box we saw on the site. Here's the transmitter. And, um, and for demonstration purposes, again, we're using Velcro, um, industrial grade uh, Velcro, which can be purchased at any store. We're going to mount that neatly inside the transmitter. We're going to plug our AC adapter inside the dog fence transmitter. Snip or twist it a little bit so it fits. Um, you know, we're going to come back to the uh, pushing the twisted up inside the box later on. Um, do just use a common wire strippers to strip the plastic off the um, wire and mount the transmitter in, in the box, the outdoor weatherproof box, as neat as possible. The uh, connections go right in the Panamax like you just saw. Now we're digging up the um, just a starter place for the um, for the twisted wire that's going to meet the uh, wire running around the property. So we we in most cases when you're doing an outdoor installation, you're going to want to get the twisted wire at least buried. Um, you know that's usually it's a trip hazard. So in this case, you don't have to, but PVC is a nice neat touch to make things look better. So. Um, you know, basically run that up to the outdoor box. That's where your twisted wire is going to come out. And as you can see in the video here, what we're doing is we're getting the uh, um, extreme dog fence wire um, ready to go. So um, we're going to run that right up inside uh, the transmitter. And always make sure you're leaving yourself enough slack when you're running around the perimeter. Um, so in this case, we're just we're bypassing the twisted wire because... Um, two wires running around the property um, leaves you kind of with a splice free system and that's great if you can do that but always remember if you're doing something like this to leave yourself enough slack because um, you know you'll pay for it later on when it comes down to you know having to do an extra splice it's just easier the you got plenty of wire with your dog fence kits um, you know and, and just as a reminder any of this heavy-duty extreme dog fence wire or professional-grade parts can be found on our, our website at flexpets.com. Um, so just feel free. We get a really friendly staff of very knowledgeable people, so feel free to call anytime if you have any type of questions. Um, so we're finishing up the um, wire here. For demonstration purposes, we're cutting the grass really short. You don't have to use a weed whacker for an above-ground installation, but... You know, it's a good idea to cut the grass short. The wire's not going to pop to the surface, um, so it's a good idea to do that. So this is our starting point. So basically what we're doing is we're tacking the wire down so no slack, and then you can use anything for the spool. Just kind of, uh, you know, walk around um, the property. That's the first part of the step, um, the installation. And then just go around your property. Corners, you're always going to want to tack it down like I'm doing right here. So tack it down tightly so it's not pulling the rest of your installation. Um, and then we're going to start with the dog fence staples. So here I recommend doing a staple every four to five feet. Um, you know, basically keep that wire tacked down below the lawnmower blader. That's going to bite you later on. You know, you're going to get that stuck in the lawnmower and it's going to bird's nest up and it's going to become a huge mess. So as you can see, we're coming up to a corner here again. So we're tacking that wire nice and tight to the ground so it's not unspooling us. Right, right you see the corner here. And always remember, dog fence fundamentals make nice rounded corners. When you come to a driveway like this, you see an expansion seam already here. So nice and easy, tack it to the ground. If you have a nice expansion seam like we have here, you can just clean that out with a screwdriver or an edger or a circular saw with a masonry blade. Um, but you can see we're also stapling it down here. And this is also part of the above ground installation, so it's not unspooling and it's, it's not causing us to do a splice later at the driveway. So finishing up, we're going around the um, property and meeting back up where we started. Um, so I was, uh, I was uh, telling you earlier in the video, we're trying to avoid twisted wire, so we have no splices. That's always better if you don't have splices. So we're completing our loop from where we started and coming back up to the, we're actually running the loop directly into the surge protector. And then um, that way, 
The dog fence surge protector, different than a regular surge protector. It protects your uh, boundary from bringing lightning in from the loop. And then, as you can see, we ran two wires from the transmitter to, or uh, surge protector to the transmitter. So we're finishing up here, stapling down everything nice. Don't skimp on, on dog fence staples. They're cheap. The more you use, the less aggravation you're going to have later. Um, and like I said, you can run it through a crack, you know, if you choose. You can also just use a PVC, piece of standard PVC that you can get at any big box store. Um, you know, if you want to give it a little added protection. If it's going across a stone driveway, that's always a good idea. Um, or if you really want to do it the right way, you could always, you know, just caulk, uh, cut the driveway if you don't already have an expansion seam and just seal over with any kind of concrete caulk. Um, if it's blacktop, obviously you're gonna wanna use a asphalt type, um, or you know, you can even use some flexible PVC pipe. You can run over this a thousand times and um, nothing's gonna affect the wire. You already got the extreme dog fence wire, hopefully. Um, so that can, that can take a lot of beating. If you have to cut the driveway, this is really the right way to do it. Cir regular circular saw, which you probably have in your garage. A little masonry saw that you can buy at Home Depot for 4 or $5. Now, we're just cleaning out in this case, but this blade will cut through a concrete or asphalt blade like a knife through hot butter if you want to go that route. So just cleaning the crack out. We're in, in this video, we're actually doing it the right way. If you don't feel like doing it, you know, you can tack it tight to both sides of the driveway. It's great if you're a renter, too, for this type of installation. Take it with you when you move. Um, so cleaning it up a little more. Um, better to always get the crack cleaned out because, um, you know, the grass isn't going to grow up and push the wire to the surface and cause problems with edgers. As you can see on the corners, we're always going deeper on the corners. And... Um, that's important. I like to go a foot down. And the reason being is you don't want to have to worry about edging and lawn maintenance. You can still have a great above ground installation, but the corners and any edge lines, you always want to get down as deep as possible. Avoid repairs and maintenance on the dog fence. The number one reason for breaks in the line is basically um, just poor workmanship. Um, if you don't think it through when you're doing the install, then you're gonna pay for it later. So just use a screwdriver to push down the dog fence wire and into the crack and um, you know, get it down there nice. Use a dog fence staple if you have to, available on flexpets.com. Um, in this case, we're just kind of using the dirt to go over top of it. Um, you know, basically that's kind of what was in the crack before, so we're using it again. So in this case, we're just kind of kind of doing a splice just to show you in case you make a mistake like we did in this video. Uh, we didn't leave enough slack, which is usually what I show. So this is a good time, the opportunity to show you how to do a proper splice. Just strip the ends, the, the plastic off the dog fence wire, the extreme grade dog fence wire. You know, leave, you know, about a quarter inch of the exposed copper. Do a nice twist, just like we're showing you here. I, if you're in the northern areas, ground expands and contracts, so I like to tie them together so when that happens, it doesn't pull your splice apart. Simple wire knot goes over top, which is, they're pretty common, um, but this tube we're showing you right here is filled with dielectric grease and silicone. So now that's very important, and it's a professional grade um, type uh, item that's available on our site. Um, that's gonna protect your exposed copper and waterproof the splice. It's what all the pros like Invisible, Fans, Dog Watch, all the big guys who are going to charge you $2,000 to install it use. And so is the rest of the material on our site. Um, so we only sell professional grade items for the most part. Um, so get your splice down there. You always want to bury splices because they're, you know, prone to stick up. Um, showing you another example how to get that wire tight to the ground. Now this is filmed in Florida, so it might be a little different in northern areas. You might not have to trim it as tight. But Riley on this system has already been trained um, from a previous install. So you can see the above ground. He already gets the idea. You can see that he sees those flags. He's real hesitant to go through them. Basically, a pretty simple setup. That's pretty much the end of our video of how to do an above ground installation. Call us anytime. We're here usually about 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. And we'll be glad to answer any of your more specific questions.
we invite you to visit www.flexpets.com. Call us today at 877-902-8132 or email us at info at flexpets.com and experience the FlexPets difference.